What's going on YouTube? It's Tej back again with another video and today I'm giving you six potential trade packages that the Green Bay Packers could take in exchange for their quarterback Aaron Rodgers. I'm jumping on the hype train. I think he's going to get dealt. I was uh, less than 50-50 probably two, three weeks ago. Then he goes on Kenny Main Sports Center, and all things are kind of pointing the direction that I think the Packers might have to sever ties with Rodgers. So I figured I'd go ahead and put this video out. I know there's already plenty of them up there on YouTube, but I wanted to wait till we got closer to June 1st. That's when the deal would be made. And Rodgers, if traded after the June 1st mark, carries a $22.85 million cap hit. Also a $16.05 million cap charge. So just want to get those money parts out of the way when talking about Aaron Rodgers. That kind of complicates it for a few teams, but we'll talk about that as we go along. But first, before I give you these packages, hopefully you enjoyed today's video. And if you do, please hit that like button. It would help me out a ton. And if you're new to the channel want more sports content in your life, please consider hitting that subscribe button. And thank you all. We just hit 70 subs, and that means the world to me. Also, comment down below where you think Aaron Rodgers is going to go and what the package might look like. And hey... Shout out your favorite team and tell me what they would have to give up if they wanted to get their hands on Aaron Rodgers. That's always kind of a fun thought experiment as well. But let's go ahead and jump in. And let's start with trade package number six. This one is, uh, I'm kind of going in reverse order because I see them as like least likely to most likely. Or at least worst fit, maybe the best fit. I don't know. Uh, but we'll start with the Philadelphia Eagles. And it's just kind of a tough package to put together because I don't know if Green Bay really wants Jalen Hurts when they already have Jordan Love. Feels like you're getting two project quarterbacks and don't know if either one is going to be the guy to replace Rodgers. But you do get the Colts 2022 first round pick. I'm assuming that, you know, Carson Wentz is going to play 75% of snaps. The Colts are going to make the playoffs, something like that, uh, to give that as a first round pick to Philadelphia. Then the Eagles first round pick, which likely going to be a pretty good one. And then a 2023 first and second. Um, I should say, if philadelphia got aaron Rodgers wouldn't be as good as what i'm thinking about it off the top of my head right now i have him as like the third to worst team in the nfl in my power ranking so uh that's a pretty good pick but if they get aaron Rodgers, obviously they'd be a little better so i like the idea of philly being aggressive and going out there to get aaron Rodgers. they had a lot of interest in deshaun watson rogers is you know a top three quarterback in the league he's just a lot older than watson is but maybe they're still in on him maybe there's a slight chance i don't know i'm not really crazy about that package so then we move on to package number five, the Las Vegas Raiders. And yet another tough one because if you're Green Bay, you're just swapping pretty identical salaries with uh, Aaron Rodgers to Derek Carr, both making in the mid $20 million range. Also, I should have noted Philadelphia has $3.7 million in cap space, so they'd have to get kind of creative. And the Raiders are kind of in a similar spot. They'd be forced to you know, make some moves. The, the easiest one's probably extending Aaron Rodgers and moving some of that cap out to another year. but. You know, teams are going to find a loophole. They're going to find ways around it. So I'm not too, too worried about whatever the cap number is for a given team. If they want Aaron Rodgers, they're going to make it happen. But in regards to this specific package, you know, Derek Carr is a top, you know, 15 level quarterback. I'm going to be doing position rankings coming up here soon on the channel. So let me know if you're excited for that. But, you know, Carr is a, you know, top half the league quality starter. And, you know, maybe if you're Las Vegas, you can you continue to reach on players who aren't deemed as first round talents. So maybe it is quality for you to try to ship them off, pull a page out of the Rams playbook, just prevent the error, get rid of those first round picks in 2022, three and four, try to get Aaron Rodgers. It's definitely a trade where we look at it and be like, yeah, it's probably a win for the Raiders. So again, I'm not really crazy about it for Green Bay. So then on to package number four with the Carolina Panthers, $14.8 million of cap space. So we're starting to get to the spot where cap's not gonna be as big of an issue. But it's kind of similar to what we talked about with Philadelphia. Would Green Bay really want Sam Darnold? I don't know, another unproven quarterback. Granted, the fifth-year option has been picked up, so you could use Darnold for at least this year to give Love another season of opportunity to sit on the bench and learn, get adequated with the playbook, all that jazz. I don't, I just, it's tough to tell because I don't know how Green Bay feels about Jordan Love right now. Like, is he ready to take the field and be a week one starter? I don't know. So, they could have Darnold in this deal if they feel they need to sit love for a little bit longer. You also get Dante Jackson, who I think would be a nice number two corner. I think he'd fit really well with Joe Barry in that uh, soft zone coverage defense. Good option opposite of Jair Alexander. And it's really a secondary that you look at. Adrian Amos is a stud. Darnell Savage is a stud. Jair Alexander is a top three corner in football. They've just been picked on with that number two corner spot. So Dante Jackson, in my mind, is an upgrade over Kevin King. 
Then you get a 2022 first rounder, the second round pick coming from the Jets, which you you know assume is going to be you know a top 40 pick or so uh, in the upcoming draft. And then a 2023 first and second. So a lot of draft capital, a solid cornerback, and then Sam Darnold as a potential bridge quarterback before you get to love. It's an okay offer. This is where we start to get in the range where things could become you know balanced in my eyes. And that takes us to the Miami Dolphins at trade package number three. They're a little light on cap space, but this trade would create some of it. I have it as Tua Tagovailoa, obviously a quarterback swap. Again, I don't know if Green Bay really wants Tua because unproven quarterback going to a second year. Carbon copies, the same thing that we can say about Jordan Love. Uh, you know, at least Tua had playing time, which is obviously nice. Christian Wilkins, this is a team in Green Bay that has kind of struggled to find uh, defensive line help next to Kenny Clark. And I mean, I think Wilkins is an improvement over Lawrence, one of the DNs slated to start according to our lads. So you could have Lowry with Kenny Clark in the middle and then Christian Wilkins next to him. That creates a nice uh, balanced front to go along with a couple of good edge rushers on the outside. And then Noah Igbenogany. Didn't get to see him a whole lot last year. He's in a crowded cornerback room. And you know, I, from what we saw at Auburn, you know, he's one of those traits and skill sets guy. He checks a lot of boxes. Will that translate to the NFL? We have yet to see. But at the minimum, it could be a worthwhile project for Green Bay to try to find a better cornerback to over Kevin King or maybe Eric Stokes. But that's kind of the complicated part is because Eric Stokes is who you took at the end of the first round. And then in addition to at least two guaranteed starters and then one other potential rotation corner in Igbenogany, you get 2022 first rounder from San Francisco, which you know, they look like they're going to be pretty good. So probably, you know, 20s or later. 2023 first rounder that belongs to Miami and that year's second round pick. So two first, a second, a QB replacement for Rodgers, a starting defensive lineman who's probably the most valuable asset outside of the draft picks. And the Noah Igbenogany, who could develop into a nice starting corner opposite Jair Alexander. It feels like uh, enough quantity to make it balanced. But again, I don't know if this is one that Green Bay would jump all over. Just given mostly because of Tua. You don't know what you're going to get with Tua. And uh, you already have Jordan Love, so I'm not sure they're eyeing a quarterback. Maybe they would rather have, uh, maybe you take out Igbenogany, you make it Xavier Howard, Christian Wilkins, and a bunch of picks. That could be a potential, you know, uh, different package the Dolphins could put together. But on to our number two package, the Washington football team. I'm surprised this hasn't been talked about more. I mean, I think uh, YouTube uh, sports media is on it, but when it comes to ESPN, Fox Sports, you just don't hear them talking about it. And to me, it's like if Washington football team got Aaron Rodgers, I might take them to win the NFC. Like I might take them over Tampa Bay, which is crazy. But the package, Deron Payne, Ryan Fitzpatrick, who I think in this case is the most likely quarterback that Green Bay would want in this spot, right? Like Sam Darnold, you know, wishy-washy, young quarterback. You already have one of those, but Jordan Love. Same thing with Tua. You already have a second-year QB that you're waiting to see what he's all about. And then, you know, Derek Carr is good, but then you're stuck in this middle-of-the-road, awkward paradigm where you don't know if he's good enough to take you to the Super Bowl, but he's also getting paid the same amount you were paying Aaron Rodgers, but he's definitely worse. you almost rather just see what Love could be on a rookie contract and try to build around that. But here, Ryan Fitzpatrick, small one-year contract, and he is a bridge quarterback. That's kind of what he's been throughout his career. And he could perfectly allow you to sit Jordan Love, for maybe not even for the entire season, the first half of the season, maybe up to your bye week, whenever that is for Green Bay. Don't have the schedule right in front of me. But nonetheless, Payne, Fitzpatrick, and then Kalik Hudson, who with the addition of Jamin Davis, kind of is going to be odd man out in that linebacking core. It's good to have a fourth linebacker, and Kalik Hudson is a good athlete, and he has some of those things that you can't teach a linebacker. Uh, but he does need to be coached up. But he could be a potential inside linebacker of the future. He's playing outside linebacker in a 4-3. And I think he could make that shift to play inside linebacker in Green Bay's 3-4. So it's kind of a, a low-key position to me. We don't really talk about it necessarily a whole lot. But Glee Hudson could step in and at least give you solid play. May not be great, but he's, he's a young player. There's still some learning curve with him. And then 2022 first, 2023 first, and third. Maybe you need more picks in there. Three total picks, two ones, and a third, but a potential starting inside linebacker in Hudson. A guaranteed starter on the defensive line at Deron Payne. Him and Kenny Clark could really get some damage done. And Dean Lowry, who's, you know, solid. And then Ryan Fitzpatrick to be the bridge quarterback before you get to Jordan Love if he you deem that he needs more time. And even, even if he doesn't, he's a plus-level quarterback. He's a smart guy, and he can help mentor Love. So 
Plus, Washington football team, $17.2 million in cap space. They're at a spot where they can almost absorb the Rodgers cap hit. So, you know, I, I really like this package. Again, don't know if it's quite enough for Green Bay. It's just tough. We don't know what Green Bay is necessarily looking for. What's the asking price? They're trying to hold on to Rodgers, so they haven't made it public what they're looking for, like Atlanta has with Julio Jones. But regardless, if Washington football team was willing to give up the assets to go get Rodgers, I'm pretty sure I'd take them to win the NFC. I'd have to look at it, but it'd be them or Tampa. And of course, number one, the Denver Broncos. I mean, the betting odds just kind of showcase where this uh, this whole dilemma's at. I almost thought about not making this video because it feels like it's Green Bay or Denver at this point. So obviously Denver has the cap space or, or pretty much has the cap space to just take Rodgers as of right now. But in this trade, they get rid of Teddy Bridgewater. Again, he gets to be a bridge quarterback, kind of like what we talked about with Fitzpatrick for Green Bay. Then they get Patrick Sertan. Denver gets Eric Stokes back. So you basically trade the number nine pick who was ended up being the number two corner taken, but was number one or two on most people's boards for the number 29 pick and Eric Stokes, who, you know, I predicted in a couple of mocks, either him or Tyson Campbell going to Green Bay, not to pat my back, but it felt like a Green Bay pick. And it, and it felt like guys who had traits and things that teams would like at the end of the first round. So a proven first round corner versus a guy you're, you're kind of reaching on. Not a whole lot of Green Bay fans were ecstatic about the Stokes pick. And then you add on, made it Draymond Jones here on the graphic, but I thought about Lloyd Cushenberry the third, but Green Bay did just draft Josh Meyer. So let's keep it at Bridgewater, Sertan, Draymond Jones. Again, another solid starter on the defensive line next to Kenny Clark. Jones hasn't quite hit his stride yet, but he's still young and he can continue to get better. And then a 2022 first, second, and a 2023 first round pick. So two ones, a two, and three starters. Bridge quarterback, a top level corner, which would give you one of the best secondaries in football, and Draymond Jones to pair up with Kenny Clark and Dean Lowry. And if this package went through, if you got good play out of Jordan Love and you put these players into the Green Bay roster, I think this team could still fight for a playoff spot. I don't know if I'd take them over the Vikings, but they could be one of the three wildcard teams. I don't know. It, it, again, it would come down to Jordan Love. Like, how crazy sporadic does he look or does he look poised? Does he look like what, he, uh, what his upside says he can be? But let me know what you thought of the video. Tell me... Am I overpricing? Am I underpricing these packages? Do I need to add more to it? I'd love to have your thoughts. And also, give me your predictions. Where is Aaron Rodgers playing next season? I'm thinking it's going to be Denver. But let me know what you think down in the comment section. And also, hopefully you enjoyed the video. And if you did, please hit that like button. It would help me out a ton. And if you're new to the channel and want more sports content in your life, please consider hitting that subscribe button. It would help me out a ton. That's all I got for you today. And until next time, my name is Teej. I'm signing off. Generation that remembers time of God. She's